Welcome to Family Values TV. In fact, it's my pleasure today to have you on this, our Leadership Empowerment Weekend. Um, it's a glorious time, and I know that you're going to enjoy it. But with me today in this studio, I have a man of God that God has destined for this generation, a man that works with humanity, a man that leads by example. And we have a privilege to be with us today, Bishop Paul Fadei. And I want you to listen and I want you to enjoy yourself. I want you to just make yourself comfortable as you listen to what man of God has to give us today, this week, being our leadership empowerment. And what are we talking about today? We are talking about the making of a leader. And how do you get that leader? I better wait for you to hear it from the horse's mouth. So you follow me. Welcome back. Thank you very much. It's always a privilege to have you in the studio and to listen to your dynamic wisdom God has placed upon your life. And um, we are happy to have you one more time. Thank you very much for having me as always. <laughs> God bless you. And uh, we're proud of what God is using you to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today, Bishop, what we are looking at, um, this is our Leadership Empowerment Weekend, and we are looking into the making of a leader, which is where the fathers and the mentors, you know, generate. And why we are so delighted to have you today, because we know that you have been there and you have tested the time and you have also mentored other people and make others to stand. So we want to know, you know, in with my audience, how can we make a leader? Well, leaders are made just like yeah. fathers. No one becomes a leader. Mm. Um, Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, when he went about recruiting those who we know today as the disciples, the first thing he said to them was, follow me and I will make you hmm. fishers of men. So before anyone can be a leader, he must be a good follower. Unfortunately, today we have so many leaders who have never been a follower. That's right. So all those disciples that Jesus called to follow him were the people he made and ultimately became apostles. So it takes a good follower. Yeah, to be a leader. To be a good That's leader. Correct. Anyone That's who has correct. not. So you want to ask the question when someone says, I'm a leader, ask him who is he following? Yes. Yes. Follow me, Jesus said, mm -hmm. and I will make, make you. you. Now we know make your fishers of men, but beyond the fishers of men, we can also look at it at I will make you now a leader. Yes. Who would have thought that Peter would now become a leader? Mm. A person who was even unstable. Mm. But as he followed him, he made him. He said, now upon this rock of revelation that you are, I'm going to build the church. Yes. This rock of revelation. Yes. Somebody who was so unstable, mm. now he's going to make, through the revelation he's given him, I will build my church and the gates of hell Can will not stop it. prevail. So obviously, you know, you need to be a good follower. A good follower. For a good leader to come out of you. Yeah, absolutely. Because in the following, that's where we test the patience, integrity, commitment, yeah. you know, sincerity. And these are all the qualities yeah. that we need yeah. for the leadership for tomorrow. Absolutely. Hmm. And the examples are endless. Paul the Apostle said, follow me hmm. as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Mm. So what made Paul a great leader was his own followership, his own being a good follower. Follow me as I follow him. <laughs> and so that you could, when, when, through the following, you get the revelation. So many things. You get the, you get the revelation, you get the instruction, mm. you know the direction. Because it takes him, that's the ultimate leader, is him. It's him. Jesus. It's him. It's Jesus. He only makes great leaders. But today, 
people have limited becoming a leader to the fact that I went to Harvard University. Yeah. As good as all these are, but you can go to Harvard, you can go to the best university if there's no structural pillar in your life on who you are following. Because the Bible says the harm of flesh will fail. Yes. I'm a firm believer in study. I do study, I do read. But as good as all those things, there must be the personality of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. That's why it says that we should look unto Jesus. Jesus, the author. The author mm. and the finisher of our faith, fate. So once people take their eyes off him, the whole world is in a mess today. Yes. Because we're trying to follow our human philosophy, our human, human psych, psychology or whatever. Hmm. Knowledge puffs off. Yes. <laughs> and it fails as it well. Fails. Wow. It fails. You know, we want to look at the other side of us, of making a leader. Yeah. Um, how can we get a good character out of people? Because sometimes leadership is failing today because of lack of character. Okay. You know, and this lack of character, not willing to listen, yeah. you know, I know it all. Yeah. And in the process of I know it all, yeah. you see the road crashing, the next person come a crash okay. because of lack of willing. So how do we look at this characteristic? The starting point to that is knowing how to yield. Mm. You got to yield. Uh, the Word of God makes us to know that God describes Himself to us mm. as the potter, and we are the clay. Yes. When we yield ourselves to Him willingly, mm -hmm. and says, "Here I am, use me," then He will start the process of taking out what needs to be taken out of us. That's right. And putting in us what needs to be put inside mm. us. Just as we will see in the case of of Joseph. Yes. Who later on became a father from um, my latest book, which uh, I'm sure you're going to talk to yeah. him in a minute. Then. Yeah. He, he, it is all through the things he went through that God was taking out what needed to be taken out of him and putting in him what needed to be put inside him. And then ultimately he was able to stand before Pharaoh as a second in command. In his wilderness. In the wilderness. Right, Bishop. You know, I was looking at your book that you wrote, The Making of a Father. You know, this book is so exciting. And when anybody takes time to look through it, you will find out that the whole point that is missing today is in this book. So tell us what inspired you to write this book. Thank you very much. I hold the inspiration to the Holy Spirit and from the Word of God. Bible makes us to know in the book of Isaiah when it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is yes, given, again. and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, mm. the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Mm. Now, this was talking about the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Him, even him, did not just come and become a father. Mm. Jesus went through the process. He was born. Mm. The King of Kings was born as a child. Mm. Raised by the one whom he, he created. Yes. And he grew up. Mm. And he became known as the son of Joseph the carpenter. And ultimately, we know him as a father. Mm. But Joseph's life now depicts who Jesus is to us. He also was born, favored by his father as a child. As a child. But began to grow. And went through so many processes in his life when it ultimately now became the second in command in Egypt. He said to his brothers who supposedly betrayed him, mm. he said, you meant it for evil, but God sent me ahead of you to prepare your posterity because God has made me a father unto Pharaoh. Now the key word there is the word made. made. And we know that for any product that we have in the supermarket or we have on our shelves, they are made out of something. Mm. They go through processes, processes before they become a product. That's right. So you can say fathers are the product of the processes of the of a making. Just like good, isn't it? Good. So that's exactly what it is. So we going through the life of Joseph, you will see all those processes that he had to go through mm. to become a father. a father. So a child is born, a son is given, but fathers are made. Don't forget, he said, God has made me to become a father to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, in the natural, would give back to him. Mm. Oh my God. 
But he is a father because he's gone through the process. He's gone through the process. And so many of those processes involve the stripping, involves molding, molding, involves shaping in him. And ultimately, it was now fashioned. Sometimes rejection. Oh, yes, it's all part of it. But in the, in the midst of the rejection, because yes. it takes uh, those who have been rejected to become elected. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. If you've not been rejected, then you <laughs> cannot be elected. There's no elected. Rejected by his brother, but elected by God. By God. But to go to come to that point of election, he has to go through the process of processing. Wow. That is so awesome. <laughs> to God be the glory. That is so awesome. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, for the fact that a man can just have a wife or even pregnant a woman doesn't make you automatically a father. Not at all. Not at all. Because fathers are being made. Yeah, fathers are made. As a matter of fact, there are those who supposedly have no children, but they are mm. fathers. Don't forget Abraham. Mm. God called Abraham the father of many nations. many nations when he had no child. Yes. I've made you a father. But he had no child. But God saw what he has put inside him and what he has made him of. So fathering really has nothing to do with baby production. No. Because unfortunately no. today in our society, we have so many yes. people who have given birth to, to children and they themselves, they are still babies. They are still babies. <laughs> they just have children, but there is no quality. No quality. No direction. No, not at all. Not at oh, all. Oh, God. God. Okay, look at this book again. Because when I was looking through it, you know, like he said, God sharpens fathers by feeling that and sending away and excavating all essences that hinder spiritual yeah. um, acuity. Yeah. Yeah. He sharpens. Mm. That is on, on, on page 38. Yes. I think it says a, a, a surgeon's knife is unmistakably useless mm. and indeed dangerous if mm. it is not sharpened. Yes. A critical surgical operation is jeopardized by blunt instruments. Can you now see how important the issue of sharpening can be? Which means that for God to use us, for God to as an instrument, mm. if we are blunt, we mm. can't cut nothing. Yes. Because we ourselves becomes a, a tool in his hand that he uses. Mm. He uses as a tool, as a tool in his hand. And God will not use a tool that is blunt. So he will take you through the process of sharpening it. Sharpening it. Sharpening to it. sharpen it. Amen. Amen. And I wrote here that the face of sharpening mm. is the making, in the making of a father is imitable. A father must be sharp and sound in the spirit. Sharp and sound. Sharp and sound. True fathers know how to design. Yes. The sharp. Designing spirits. Know when things are supposed to yeah. be and when things are not supposed. Absolutely. You know? Be, be, be a watchman, a yeah. watch knight. Uh, absolutely. Pick sharp. it up in the spirit. Absolutely. Sharp. Protect. Yeah. Guide. Yeah. Nurture. Absolutely. But those things are missing today. And yeah. that is why our youths, you know, that, you know, some of them have no direction because there's no father. Unfortunately. And because even the fathers, supposedly fathers, have not yielded themselves to the father. Because it takes the father to make a father that's where the mistake is and that's what we're trying to correct today yeah, absolutely that you, you need to yield yourself to the father to the father when you yield yourself to the father then father will come and give you all the thing that you need to be a father a father yeah yeah because without it the father. you can't be the father is the father wow Paul said, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, by whom the heaven and the heart is, is made, is named. Wow. The Father. It takes the Father to make a father. Yes. <laughs> yes, it takes a father. We're going to be on break now. When we come back, we're going to ask Bishop to tell us more. In case you want to be a good father there, in case you want to say that you want to turn around from things you were doing and you want to look up to the Father, Bishop is going to tell us more. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
welcome back. I did tell you that when we come back, we're going to ask Bishop, in case you are there, you want to be a good father and um, you don't know what to do. Um, Bishop is here, you know, to give you a direction before we we'll ask him again, the spirits of a good father. So Bishop, if somebody is out there, probably have realized their mistake and, you know, they want to change and be a good father, what do you think they would do? Well, apart from repenting, mm -hmm. repentance in the sense that we've tried to be what we want to be by ourselves. Mm. Because Jesus said, without me, you can do, do nothing. Not say. But the repentance means that I'm yielding myself to you, God. Make me who you want me to be. Mm. Because really, as a man, as a, as, a, as a man, God wants to make you a father. Now, we must not also not limit fathering to a male thing, because that's what we also know as the spirit of fatherhood. Mm. Because there are women there who, not by their own fault, yes. they've had to take up the role of a father in the life of their children. That's right. They shouldn't feel left out or feel, what's wrong with me? That's right. Because there was a case in the Bible of someone called Naomi, who became a father figure in the life of Ruth. Mm -hmm. The father, the husband is gone, everyone is gone. She was left. To her. And she, through the grace of God, single-handedly raised up Ruth. Mm. And you really believe that through the lineage of Ruth, Jesus came. Wow. So there is that what we know now, the spirit of fatherhood mm. that God releases upon his own people as a yield. Mm. Now we just said it's almost like as they yield. They that yield is very, as very a yield to him. As they yield. Yield to him. It's and as a yield to him, important. yeah, you, you make something out of nothing. Yeah. Because you can't when you rebel, you can't get anything no. out of rebellion. If you are willing you, and obedient. And obedient, you, you will eat, eat the fruit of the land. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it ah. starts from inside. A heart. Because look at the look at the case of Joseph, whom we've been looking at in this book, mm. The Making of a Father. God had to walk in him. Mm. Because naturally he has every reason to be bitter, to be angry with the way he was abused and used mm. by his brothers. Not only that, he was lied upon, lied on by Potiphar's wife, put into prison. Not only that, the people who promised him, so to say, that they would help him, even forgot him right in the prison there. I tell you. So he has so many reasons. But yet God is still doing something. Inside him. So by the time he got to the palace, God has walked a change inside him. Mm. So that by the time he saw all those that supposedly betrayed him, he looked at them and said, don't worry, you meant it for evil, but God sent me ahead to make, and God has made me now side. a father. And indeed, he was a father. A father to Pharaoh, now a father to his brothers. A protector. A protector, a provider. A provider. Yeah. He provided jobs for his brother. A counselor. Yeah. Told, told them, when you go before Pharaoh, tell them, we ask you what's your occupation. Tell them the occupation you are into <laughs> cattle rearing. He provided a job. Yes. So truthfully, they are providers. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't it amazing that sometimes as well, when God wants to make you a leader, he will start from, you know, the Bible said, before you were born, yeah. I knew, I knew you. you. In other words, he has singled Joseph out for a leadership a true reflection yeah. of a father yeah. who will guide and nurture. Absolutely. And then he start telling him beforehand. Yeah. Absolutely. Start calling him. Yeah. And out of innocence, he will just come and tell his brothers, this is what I saw. Yeah. You guys were buying before <laughs> me. But they could not understand it. Yeah. But they didn't know that it's not about the age. It's not about how big, how no. tall you are. No. God can use anybody yeah. to be a father That's true. to you. Absolutely. Because it was preparing him and they were like, why should it be you, small child? But they didn't know that this is how God wants to do it in their own generation. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. You need to understand that the making of a father it's not by coincidence. It's not about we have 12 in our house. Because yeah. your mother can burn 12, but it's only one yeah. that God will choose. 
you know, to lead. And in leading, you need the spirit of obedience. You have to yield. You have to recognize that it, it must not be the firstborn to, you know, to exactly. lead, or the secondborn, or even the lastborn, but the person that God has put the mantle. And Bishop, what I understand is that whenever God put that mantle upon someone to lead, yeah. their characteristic is, is always different. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, it's a grace of the it's carry. A, it's a grace. The carry. You know? It should be evident. It, it, it's what from I mean. Child, from childhood. I think I mentioned in this book, mm. and I owe it to God Almighty. Mm. Growing up as a, as a young child, I mean, I got born again when I was 12 years. Praise God. So the wisdom of God has always been at work inside one, even without me actually knowing. Yes. On a particular day, my dad called me and said, I should kneel then. I thought maybe I've done something wrong. And he looked at me and said, you are a young child, but you are, you are wearing the garments of the elders. Mm. And this, my dad said, my late father, say, I respect you. And I was surprised because as my own natural father, he saw something inside me that I didn't even That's know, right. but it yes. was evident. So, but the good thing is that when there's, 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 there is an inworking of God inside a man's life make, to make him a father, God will surround him with the right people yes. who can help nurture that I process agree. going. I agree, Bishop, because it's, it's just the same way here. You know, being the last born, but, you know, I was like the first son. There you go. You know, I have to counsel, I have to lead, yeah. I have to, you know. But oftentimes when people neglect the grace, they suffer for it. Well, you because know? of lack of understanding. It's, understanding. it's a grace. It, it has is. nothing. Fathering has nothing to do with age. Mm -mm. It has to do with grace. Mm -mm. Or even leading yeah. doesn't, you know, it has nothing to do with no. age. Yeah, it's grace. You know, it's grace. It's grace. It's and grace. God gives more grace to the humble. So that's mm. why you see in the life of Joseph, before he ultimately became a father, God took pride out of his life. He took pride out of his life because there was some element of pride in the life of yes. Joseph too. So he, he went through the process of stripping, mm. stripping of that pride. The taking away of those garments of many colors, good of many colors, is not just taking off the coat, mm -mm. it's to strip him of his pride. Yes. Because he was taking pride in the coat. Those what I know what his brothers have to strip him of it. <laughs> And many of us need those coats of supposedly colors. That's of right, so that they can really, really be able to, you know, humble themselves and Absolutely. just listen. Yeah. But the thing is that even that physically they take it off him, but spiritually he's still having the many colors, which is the one, the hidden treasure Absolutely. that God has put in him yeah. that him alone cannot see. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Oftentimes we don't see what God has put inside yeah. us. Yeah. You know, we see this one. Yeah. But when they take it off from you, yeah. the one God Himself has stored that you need to work on. Yeah. You know, yeah. to be the real you yeah. who God has made you yeah. to be. Yeah. You know, He will allow you to go through that process. Yeah. And when God finishes, you become the father of the nation, the cream. leader yeah. of the nation. Yeah. Your wisdom just different. Yeah. Your understanding different. How you counsel different. Father will give you Hallelujah. glory. <laughs> and I believe that so many people who are watching today, which I believe that they are going through that process right now. Yes. As a matter of fact, like Joseph, after this coat of many colors was taken off him, he went to prison. Can you imagine him exchanging his coat of many colors for prisoner's clothes? But it was for a short while. Was a because short afterwards, while. when he left the prison, he changed his garment and he came to Pharaoh's palace. They gave him a, a garment, a new garment, a new ring, a new shoe. Ooh, gee. G, That's a change. He said, you made it for evil, but G. God now has made yes, me father. Yes, yes, yes. You might be the one God is making <laughs> now. As you are watching us, you know, you might be the one God is preparing. preparing. You might be the one God wants to put the new shoe on. Yeah. A new garment. Yeah. A garment of new joy. Yes. A, gar a garment of boldness yeah. to lead your generation. Yeah. So don't despise the days of the humble beginning. Yeah. All you need to do, just bow down and submit, allow somebody to mentor you. Walk under somebody and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and God will bring the real mentor into your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen. of Nazareth. Amen. Bishop, if somebody wants to access this book, yeah. The Making of a Father, yeah. where do they go? Well, they can go to my website, mm -hmm. paulfaday.com and they can link them, they can order online uh, through the um, PayPal, or the ebook, you can also get that on the Amazon. Okay. Amazon, just Google 
the making of a father and it, it, it should come up there. Awesome. It's a or you could order <laughs> through Family Values TV. Praise God. We will always have a copy That's good. and you know we will access it you know for you and I tell you if you also get it from us Bishop is gonna give you discount. There's loyalty discount. No problem. With all, with all pleasure. With all pleasure. I just want the whole generation to be yes. blessed by it. Hallelujah. And the funny I, thing about this book, mm -hmm. young children, young people are finding it interesting to read. Yes. I was speaking to a woman recently who said his children, uh, discussing with his children, his sons, and they find it interesting. Amen. Because they are the, they are the future generation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And not only that, any young person who has got that vacuum, yes. you know, you you. There is that gap in your life that you need to be filled. I will advise you to get this, get hold of this book and study it, read it. It will empower you. Even when there is no a father in your life, doesn't mean that you cannot be a good one. Doesn't mean that God cannot use it. It is only a process. Everything you find yourself in life is just for a process and for a time. Maybe when you read the book and understand it, you know why. There is no father in your life, but God is your father. Mm. The most of it all, God is your father. Amen. So I will encourage you, get hold of this book uh, and, and read it, and it will be a blessing. I just want to read, you know, briefly about um, Bishop Fadei. He is a bishop of Grace Atrich Church worldwide, the ministry headquarters located in London, England in in Old Kent Road in case if you know um, he is called to be apostle to the nation God has blessed his work and 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 he has seen a growth in his ministry because of the humble spirit I tell you I know this man of God he worked with humble spirit humility that is why i love him so much bishop family by tv we love you we love you too. because love you, too. you know the ability that you have to listen to people you know to nurture without even it's hardly people know that you are a bishop you know to god be the glory so you know i know what i'm talking about you need to connect with this man of god and he will be a blessing uh, and to you we just want to leave you now and we'll come back again next week. By the time we'll come back, we're going to bring a new, a new um, uh, uh, second part of leadership uh, making for you. But until I see you again, remember, Family Values TV is always there for you. Help us, uh, you know, do the work that God has called us to do in the community. We are there to build the community. We are there to build our young ones. And we are there to tell you that we will always be there for you. So remember, your family do matters. God bless.